Hi, I'm Peter Jives, a Jesuit priest and director of A Faith That Does Justice. This Sunday, the church celebrates Pentecost, the descent of God's spirit, the descent of Jesus' spirit upon his disciples, so they might have the grace and the courage to continue the work that he has begun. And today we are those disciples. Through our baptism, we have received the same grace, the same courage of the spirit to continue the unfinished work of the kingdom of God on behalf of the common good of all God's people, so they might know the salvation that has been offered to them. Our readings speak of this, all three. In that first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Luke is writing, uh, telling us really of the event that has happened. He uses a description of grave imagery of wind and fire, tongues of fire descending upon the disciples, offering them this gift. Uh, so that they might be able to go forth with the courage to really uh, advance the kingdom of God, the work of the kingdom of God in this world. He also uses the image of uh, speaking in tongues, really to portray the idea that God's message now is moving beyond Jerusalem, is moving beyond Israel. It will now reach to the ends of the earth, offering all God's people an opportunity to realize their own potential as human beings and the salvation that they have been offered. In our first reading from Corinthians, Paul really speaks of this spirit as being multifaceted, offering many different types of gifts to many people. There is only one spirit, but there are many, many gifts. Each of us uh, using to our own ability the gifts that we are offered on behalf of not just ourselves, but of really all God's people so they might know um, their potential as human beings and the salvation that they have been offered. And so finally then in our, our gospel reading from John, we hear a resurrection or an appearance story. Uh, it is the evening of Easter Sunday, the resurrection of the risen Christ. And Jesus has appeared through walls suddenly to his disciples. And he offers them the three essential elements of these resurrection stories. First, there's an offering of peace. Peace be with you. It is really an offer of forgiveness to disciples who had betrayed him only days before, reconstituting them as a community, offering them forgiveness and really the consolidation of the work that they had begun to continue forth in this world. Second, he offers them the reassurance that this Jesus that they are seeing, who has appeared in his glory, in his risen form, who has come through walls, not walked through a door, is the same Jesus that they knew in his ministry upon this earth. And finally, Jesus sends them off in mission, receive the Holy Spirit, and he sends them forth to the ends of this earth so that the kingdom of God might be known, the salvific offer of God might be known to all God's people. And so we can step back, I think, today on Pentecost and realize that it is through our own baptism that the Spirit ought to lead us to where God will have us go. It takes the freedom within each of us to put aside self-interest and allow the Spirit to really well within us and to, to offer us opportunities to really witness to this kingdom of God, a world where there is love, compassion, and a sense of justice for all God's people, offering the gifts of our lives on behalf of the common good of all all people. And so today we, we, we go forth knowing that the task is not easy, living this life, moving beyond uh, the spirit of baptism and the, the gift of the spirit to placing it into action, an action that really will act against human sinfulness and that will offer uh, the goodness of God, the uh, life-giving offer of God to all people wherever we can. And so we pray for this spirit, that this spirit may be known by us, that we might have the courage to really reach out beyond ourselves and to live, not just for ourselves, but before the kingdom of God, to witness to it so that all God's people might become the people that God desires them to be, and in the process, reach the salvific offer that God has made to them. So there's food for thought. I hope it is helpful. I look forward to speaking with you next week, but until then, be safe and uh, we will speak soon. Thank you very much.